It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Minnesota Vikings. And it's coming up next on Madden Football. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. Straight ahead, we've got a pretty good one on tap here, as it'll be the L.A. Chargers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon, so pleased to be joined, as always, by Charles Davis. At CD, these Vikings had things rolling in 2022. A 13-4 record, new head coach, an exciting offense, but it all came crashing down in another early playoff exit. And that really was because of the defensive side of the ball. They had a terrific record. What they win, 11 games by one score or less, an NFL record? Got to get strong on the defensive side in order to get deeper into the playoffs. And meanwhile, for the Chargers, you know, they have the pieces in place. They were a playoff team in 2022. What do you see for them this year? You give this team full health throughout the season, and they have a chance to be not just a playoff team again, but beyond, because they'll scare the heck out of you on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, that's where they have to start playing a little bit better. Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. From his end zone, here's Darius Davis. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line, so bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision, loses him about four yards. So the Charger offense making its way out, and at the controls is the league's second leading passer a year ago. At 25 years of age, out of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. The Chargers just continue to improve and take steps forward under the quiet leadership of Herbert, who's been the most productive quarterback in league history through his first three seasons. Over 4,700 yards last year, he's expecting to crack the 5,000-yard mark in this season. Herbert going to go to the air right away. Finds the open man. It's Mike Williams. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Now the seven-year veteran, Austin Eckler. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back-to-back. -back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Now a pass hauled in downfield, and they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. They'll get 34 yards there. Well, things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Herbert will give this one to Eckler. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked in terms of the side. And the Chargers are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. Well, they've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point, because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, OK, what are you going to do to change things? And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Austin Eckler 
punching it in from a yard away. And the Chargers are on the board first here this afternoon. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal. They've got to like the way that they started this ball game. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production. And the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season. His best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 26. Now a throw out to his fullback is complete. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. I think they tried to fool him on that one. You know, being able to throw the ball to the fullback position, no one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage. You think they should yank that one from the playbook, at least uh, for the time being? <laughs> I, think you, I think what you do is you take it out and you evaluate it next week in practice. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up the first down. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot in the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? They geared up and took the deep shot downfield, but it turned out it wasn't one-on-one -on -one coverage. Extra defenders in the area, and that one winds up incomplete. Second and 10. To the air again, it's Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Throwing his Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 37. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game, and it will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball, controlling the game, controlling the clock. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Cousins again. 
Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31, and then the defense rallying quickly after that broken tackle. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Cousins from the gun on third. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers' 20-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll make it second down. They'll throw again. Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And picked up by the Chargers. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. And a defensive-minded coach loves to turn up the heat, turns it up there, it pays off. And back in the good old days, those defensive-minded coaches just talked about intimidating teams, using force, right, beating them to the punch. In this case, they're talking about creating turnovers. That's all they preach, all game long, all practice long, every meeting, get the football. That's what they want. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Herbert following the turnover. And that is incomplete. How about this offense? Already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? They've certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try a pressure advantage. Play action. It's Herbert. His throw complete right side to the tight end, Parham. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Here's third and six. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Brian Asamoah in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter, because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. On is the punter, Scott, here as he gets this one away. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. Yeah, difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz it? Do I need to pressure it? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he'll get this up past the 35-yard line.
Cousins on first down. He's going to look deep down the field. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Now Cousins. Into the hands of the rookie, Jordan Addison. Five yards, now it's third and five. Again, it's Cousins. That's down the field for Jefferson. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on to punt for Minnesota. And the rookie Darius Davis deep for the Chargers. This is taken at the 15. A nice work on the return as he gets about 15 yards back. And it'll be Charger football here as they take over. Chargers offense back onto the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? On first down, it's Herbert. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now it's Herbert. He'll drop this one off to Eckler. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Give him 15 yards on that one and a charger first down. Just the first quarter, but tackling going to be so important going forward. They've got to limit plays like that. And that's something when you see it happen early in the game and they don't get him on the ground, you can always tell that they were concerned about it going in. Because I can just tell you from my days, I remember being in college and wearing all off season about our season open opponent, and they had a receiver that could shake and bake with the best of them. I tackled him on the first pass of the game, and the relief was incredible. I ended up having a pretty decent ball game. But if I had missed him, it, <laughs> it would have been, been a different story. long night. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Offense looked a little bit discouraged after that play, shaking their heads a bit, looking at each other. I think they thought they'd get a lot more out of that call. Sometimes you do get the running lane you want, and other times, the defensive front, they just break up the play before it can get going. Herbert now. A uh, quick throw there he is incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw at all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. They'll fake the handoff. Now Herbert. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. And Daniil Hunter, he's the one who gets in there and brings him down to the ground. Tried to create a little bit of that hocus pocus with some magic. But the defense, not impressed at all. They don't lose contain on this very dangerous runner, and they get a big stop. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. On oh, the return is Powell. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Vikings will take over here, first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. 
And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually <laughs> looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Cousins. To the sideline and incomplete. Locked in completions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Cousins. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, and one of the linemen on the other side has got it. Second time in this game, Charles, the ball is squirted out from his hands. Luckily, his teammate was there to pounce on it. You're right. Got the lucky bounce, able to retain possession. You know, we often talk about the combine and why do we measure quarterbacks' hands? Is that really a big deal? It's for situations like this. Do you have the hands big enough and strong enough to hold on to the football while being jostled? So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Now, fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and out will come the offense as they take over. Herbert and the Chargers now with a first and 10 at their 38. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throws left side complete to Keenan Allen. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. Eckler now between the tackles. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Charger football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. Herbert. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that one will skip out of bounds as the linesman will mark this thing right at the 15-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And all he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 25 yards there on the catch and run. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, 
doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. A first down throw for Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. It'll be a gain of five at its second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. Here's Madison running left. And good pursuit yet again by the Chargers as they stuff him behind the line. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Oh, they had a good chance to get off the field defensively there. If they could just wrap up, it's going to be a fourth down. But instead, they can't get him on the deck, and he allows them to pick up the first down. Here's Madison running on first down, and they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. They work now on second and nine. To throw is Cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. On third down, Cousins. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. Only able to gain a couple there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this will stay at a seven-point game. And this is a commentary in today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on him, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. L.A. readies for its next possession. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. On first down, Justin Herbert over the middle, and it's caught Keenan Allen. And he's got this down to the 35. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake in the line of scrimmage, got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Running on first down, Eckler. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Herbert operating from the red zone. It's caught by his running back, Austin Eckler. Touchdown, Chargers! Austin Eckler, he scored on the ground and through the air. And the Chargers have taken a two-touchdown lead now. 
Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And out now come the Vikings. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. He gets it to Addison. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First down, here's Cousins. And this one nearly picked off. Yeah, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. To throw, Cousins. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and ten. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Not many boos just yet from this home crowd, but they may be starting soon as I'm starting to detect an uneasy murmur through this crowd. This offense, they've been lifeless in this first half. And now here's another punting situation and a fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. Davis now to return it. Following the punt return here, there is someone shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. The Charger drive about to get going. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here that could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how do we have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking, usually the best way to maintain control. Here's Herbert. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 13 for number 13, and it gives him a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? 
Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, right at the 40. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So second down and 10, once again, they'll go from the 40. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. But you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. Darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Back to throw here, Herbert. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And the Vikings are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. So really the first speed bump that this offense has encountered. They'd have the rule of the roost here in this first half, but now slowed up just a bit by the interception. And there's a chance that that's a wake-up call for them because you don't want to go on autopilot too early. That team on defense is capable of making some plays similar to the one they made right there. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at the 34. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. A strong running. <laughs> and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Cousins now to throw on first down. Complete. Jefferson the target. And that's good for a gain of six. And it'll be second down. Good throw, good catch. But I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Back to the ground on first down. Here's Madison. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second and a couple. Cousins. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And he's able to get this down. He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down.
They'll go Madison up the fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And picked up by the Chargers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, you know how often we hear about the red zone, right? From the 20-yard line going in, that scoring zone, getting points on the board. A lot of teams call from the 10-yard line in the green zone. That's your money zone. He fumbles the ball inside the money zone. You have one job, take care of the ball. That didn't happen. Austin Eckler in the Charger offense reclaims center stage. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They started on the ground with Eckler. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But a guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Herbert now. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. The Chargers on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Herbert. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Two minutes to play. First half, it's 14 to nothing. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Herbert. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. A big play there for L.A. 56 yards. I'll tell you what, this is not going to be a fun discussion at halftime for this defense. They've been absolutely taken advantage of in the first half. And here's another play for big, big yardage. Here's first and goal, and gosh, points here. A chance maybe to put this thing away before halftime. Herbert back to the air. He throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Here's Herbert now on second down. Shrugs the tackle. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Justin Herbert, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers have moved out in front by three touchdowns. And there's a little bit of a case of back to the future because Justin Herbert as a rookie, five rushing touchdowns, three in 2021, and none last year. I think that speaks to his development as a pocket passer and trusting his receivers more and more. But in this case, trusted himself and found the end zone. Extra point up and good by Dicker, and it's now 21 to nothing. Now, after the Dicker field goal, he's back out, ready to send it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. 
And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Throw caught there by Osborne. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 19 yards there on the catch and run. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try to put some points on the board. On first and 10, Cousins. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it, and it's second down. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. Now Cousins. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll throw again. Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Cousins. That's gonna be knocked away and incomplete. Well, it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just gotta come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Off the play fake, Cousins. Able to find the open man. That's complete. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Cousins again. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's rare that a receiver of his caliber would drop one pass, but that's now two times he's had his mitts on one and lost it. Yeah, and I don't think that they're going to lose confidence in him, though, because of the track record. Such a good player, maybe having a bad game, but I think they'll still go to him in a critical spot. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Throwing his Cousins. That's to the pylon and incomplete. The Charger D making things difficult, and it's fourth down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. For the field goal, a 28-yard attempt. Joseph's got it, and the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. 
So they get the three points, but they've now had three trips into the red zone, and that's all they've come away with. And in the NFL, the way they measure red zone efficiency and success, did you score touchdowns on those drives? That's first and foremost. Getting points, that's the second measurement. So by that measure, they haven't done very well. They've got to figure that out. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Chargers take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. The Charger drive about to get going. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we have reached halftime intermission with the visiting Chargers on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. This was an extremely one-sided first half. One team showed up, ready to go. The other's been in a daze thus far, but there's still plenty of time left for this one to tighten up significantly. It was Austin Eckler who was the star of that first half. He found the end zone twice, once on the ground and once in the passing game, as he proved he's anything but a one-dimensional running back. All right, coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. A pass there over the middle to start things out. So the completion good for seven there, and it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 38 now, here's second down and three. Play action now, Cousins. And this one is gonna be off the mark, too far out in front. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Play fake, Cousins. Over the middle and complete to Addison. And he's brought down. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. 
Now a give to Madison. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. It was Sebastian Joseph who got him down defensively. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. From the 42-yard line, here's the second down and nine. To throw, Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he's brought to the ground with another first down at the Chargers 31-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Boy, nowhere to go at all on that first down run as they will get to him behind the line of scrimmage. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Now Cousins. Chargers able to get the pressure and bring him down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. They'll look to throw. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Short completion, just four yards, and that's gonna make it fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. So now they're gonna send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And he missed it. It's no good. And the deficit will stay at three scores. Uh, you know that they were thinking second half comeback here. That's a big miss if they want to have a chance at that comeback. A very big miss because time is becoming a real factor now. And they're three scores down. Now we'll look at the Chargers offense. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it, and now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. Play action, it's Herbert. There's a short sure throw to his tight end, McKinney. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Byron Murphy there on the tackle. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Here's a second and five. Off the play fake to Eckler, it's Herbert. That's complete to Palmer. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 19. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them, and these guys have been taking advantage so far. Herbert operating from the red zone. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. 
Justin Herbert looking to pass. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That was a nice grab. Just couldn't get the feet down, right? You need that toe tap sequence there. Whatever size shoe he's wearing, probably need about a half size smaller to complete that one. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A lot of deflated looks on that defense. It seems like they just cannot find a way to get a key stop on third down. Here's another conversion, and now this offense, they're in a position to go up even further as they've got it first and goal. Up the middle with Eckler. Down at the two. Broke through first contact, but ultimately stopped shy of the goal line. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. It's larger been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. From the two now, second and goal. Eckler again. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Los Angeles. Austin Eckler taking it in from two yards out as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those Mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And they open the lead up now to 25. Here's Dicker now as he'll send this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit, and then to not even see the ball go through the posts. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. Meanwhile, Cousins, and the throw here caught by Addison. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Well, the margin on that scoreboard, obviously, for them, it looks daunting. But I don't know, Charles. They're probably not focused on that right now. Maybe just chaining together a positive drive with plays like we just saw, giving themselves something to build on. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And what they have to be careful of is getting glued to that scoreboard, trying to do too much. Because if you do that, you're all but guaranteed to start making mistakes. Just focus on one play at a time and make each one successful. Now second and five. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. Well, a lot of ground left to make up, obviously. A lopsided contest, and we're already in the third quarter. Now they won't get it all back in one play or one drive. That's cliche, but it's true, Charles. If they can just maybe get plays like that and get a little momentum built, they can get the scoreboard a little closer. And can you add some blinders to the cliche, meaning keep these guys from looking at the scoreboard because that doesn't help them at all right now. Their focus needs to be on finishing every drive with points and playing mistake-free football from here on out. 
Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Again, it's Cousins. Middle of the field to Jefferson. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second down, Cousins. A uh, quick throw there is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Cousins now. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Slant route, and he's got Addison. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as the tackle has made it about the five. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. Now Cousins got a man and he hits him in stride. No gain on the play, and it's second and goal. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. A line of scrimmage once again, the five, as they get ready for second and goal. On the toss, Madison. And yeah, this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. You gotta figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. Third and goal for Cousins. Toward the end zone, but that's gonna wind up incomplete. Well, no one likes to see that drop, but I'll guarantee it's not going to stop his quarterback from going back to him any time he has open space. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Joseph is good, and they're back within three scores as it's now a 22-point game. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Joseph now to kick this one away. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The offense heading back out as we take a closer look at Austin Eckler. He's had a touchdown for every quarter so far. Three here in the third and probably hoping he's not done yet. And this is a situation where it's okay to be greedy. When you've already scored three times, you want four, you want more than that. And guess what? That only helps your team. Yeah, so far three, now in search of four. Herbert going to lead up the Chargers here first and ten at their own 28-yard line. He'll hand off here to Eckler. Gets past one man and past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 101 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. 
One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. A play fake and now Herbert to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and 10. On the give, this is Eckler. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here's Herbert. That is caught, and he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Eckler, they run left side. As he's got this down inside the 40 to the 39. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Now, I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. They got a completion there, but that's clearly an example of one side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very, <laughs> hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. A handoff, it's Eckler. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play backwards a yard. Here's Herbert. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era. We think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Going on the ground with Eckler. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. When we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. Now this is going to be a quarterback draw. And he's in for a Charger touchdown. Justin Herbert. A 16-yard touchdown run. And the Chargers up the lead to four scores now here in this fourth quarter. 
What a call there on the quarterback draw. You want to spread the field and just tell your QB, hey, find a lane and go. And he's able to get the defense in a vulnerable spot and then take it into the end zone. Extra point up and good by Dicker. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. So after the touchdown, here's Dicker out to kick this one off. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And now out comes Minnesota. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Cousins on first down. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. On second down, this is Madison. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? First down, here's Cousins. He'll get this underneath to Madison. He had a great strong move, but he'll still be stopped shy of midfield. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing is Cousins. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Cousins to throw it. He completes this into the hands of Jefferson. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Cousins again. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. But well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. 
Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Now a second and 10. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. On third down, Cousins. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Chargers are going to have it here just past the 25. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, okay, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. Austin Eckler in the Charger offense reclaims center stage. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, that's the fear any defense has when the quarterback gets involved in the running game. You don't usually account for him, and he's hurting them today. Yeah, he's been very involved in the running game. Defensively, when you've got the coverage good downfield, how do you account for him, though? Occasionally, you start to spy him. Take someone who has the same agility, who can dance with him, run with him, and try and keep him in the pocket. Yeah, it'll be especially critical here as we come down the stretch in the fourth. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Eckler are going to get it again on second down. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And this offense on third down today, five out of nine thus far. This will be third and six. Now Herbert with it, looking to pass. Got a man, it's complete, it's Palmer. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. There's a beautiful throw there, and he's been sensational the entire game and moving it around, spreading it, hitting the right guys. And look, under normal situations, partner, I would expect him to come out of the game now. They've got it in hand. But you and I have been around this league a long time, and every time we ask head coaches about it, hey, why don't you take your quarterback out when the game's in hand? They just kind of give us that look like that's what he's paid to do. So it's a very unusual situation. I'd want him out. They tend to leave him in. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. At the Vikings, 44-yard line. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Charger football as we welcome you back from the two-minute warning. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Eckler going to get it again on second down. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. A free safety roaming all the way up to the line of scrimmage to make that stop. How about his ability to trust his eyes and figure out it was not a pass play and go fast towards the line of scrimmage in order to make that tackle. On third down, here's Eckler. 
Unable to corral him. He fights through. And he is going to have the Chargers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. It's Eckler again. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. So this one's over. It's in the win column for the L.A. Chargers. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points, that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish. Just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.